So basically, we can start off. Oh, hold on. My is not in there. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna start off with a some primitive. So the sphere, I don't need that. I'm gonna change. So under sub two, I'm gonna add a cube. So I'm gonna use insert. I mean, if you, how about this? Let, let me start all fresh. Here we go. So start it again. I'm gonna create a new use cube and draw it turn on edit and we need to make cube a uh, make poly match but before that let's turn on poly frame quick can you see the detail there's a bunch of detail there let's start it with something simple if you move your sub to palette score it down under initial click on it now by default any primitive will have initial so now under initial you can change the res uh, resolution can you see like resolution x oh that's a scale sorry right here here we go oh wait what am i doing site cow x Oh, divider. Sorry, I got confused. Here we go. So you can reduce the divider, but we don't really care so much about the detail here. So I just want to show you, you can edit them. Now, if you make poly mesh, though, and then go back to initial again, this will be different. You can get more uniform and you don't need, uh, it, you can eliminate that pinch. If you click Q cube, it's quad cube. The resolution is two by two. So it's two subdivide. Say, can you see? So you get two by two on X, Y, Z. You can change this if you want, which I am not suggest you to do it, but you can. Now, the thing is uh, for the first project, we will not really care so much about this resolution because at the end we will convert this to a data match. So Q cube with X two uh, X Y Z at two is fine. While before you edit, you can switch to sphere. Here we go. It look like this. You can switch to slender. Now you have slender X is longer. Slender Y is just horizontal. Slender C is just point to the front face. That's what it does, the initial. Okay, so right now when we look at that shape, it's kind of boxy. So I will switch to Q cube and just resolution is two. So I'm gonna go to side view. So that is match. And I'm gonna move this. So we're gonna use a gizmo. Once again, I'm going to review how to use Gizmo again. So right now you have lock button. See, when you hop over uh, using your cursor, you will see the description. And it said all to unlock. So it's mean you don't have to click to unlock and click to lock. You can actually hold alt key. Here we go. My alt key doesn't work. Something happened with me. You guys should be able to do alt key. Can you guys all do alt key? Guys? Um, what is alt key supposed to do? To unlock this button. Oh, yeah. I can I... see that does that. Okay, can you guys try? My system has something weird. I can't use alt key today. Um, it's working for me. Well, sort of. AppStream, of course, has a bit of lag. Right. Hold on. My... 
why my alt key doesn't work. Well, so I have to click this, but that's alt key. So now, can you try this? Unlock alt key and then rotate the uh, white disc. You right, can, yeah. Yep, you can reorient the uh, orientation of the uh, gizmo. So, for example, I can scale. Hey, okay, hold on. I, I can. My brush is really bad. Why I cannot grab that? Let me zoom in quick. I cannot scale on that direction. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know what happened. I need to lock it back and then can you see I can scale into that direction and I can undo so if I unlock and repose a uh, reorientation now what if I want to go back uh, I want my orientation of the tripod to go back to the origin right here this button reset orientation here we go and then now I can lock so now when I scale on Y axis, it's go like this. Now, when you are on flat two dimensional, like I go to the side view, you can use this icon to move two axis, Y and, and Z. Can you see Y and Z? So you can reposition and I can scale this down. Here we go. Now I can rotate it. Can you turn on polyframe so that you can see the polyframe and reposition? Here we go. So now I can extend Z direction. Now, what if, let's undo, I wanted to ex uh, scale right here from, from this side. If you, let me move this, unlock and then reposition. The pivot point right there and then locked it again now I can scale like this can you see and I'm gonna move I'm gonna reposition can you try okay. um yeah I mean, yeah. every once in a while, I have to, you know, save my stuff in AppStream, of course. It takes a while to do that, Got but um, I get, like, uh, you know, the basics the of basics. Okay. how to move the widget. That's good. Now, your instruction's very clear. Okay, good. good. So, at this moment... Actually, the gizmo has uh, ability to create a taper, but based on what we see, it's too much work try to use the gizmo to do taper. Easier when you just move point. So to move point, you go to draw, and on draw, this time though, you can either use move topology or move. Now the move topology, what it does is, is this, is help you to control the way you move based on the wireframe. But with move, it ignore all the wireframe. It just move based on the brush. So like if you have more dense topology, this might be good to to use at some point. Um, you can't really see much different right now here because the, the problem is a big, uh, not the problem because it's such a low res. Now, when I move like this, though, I better to turn on a uh, symmetry, right? So I'm gonna undo. If I go to transform, active symmetry shortcut is x and remember press x it doesn't mean you enable x symmetry it's just a shortcut to turn on active symmetry that's it 
to change X, Y, or Z, you have to click right here, like switch Y or X. This one will be X because can you see the tripod? If I move, it's come like this. So now I'm gonna rotate it back to the side. Now, if I move, it look like this, and then I can keep moving. And actually, this time, I want it when 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 you look at on the font view, I want to I want this to look like this, so that it has a little curve when we increase uh, when we uh, make this as a dynamash. So switch. Oh, here we go. We form the shape, and now I think. This section is good. How about right there? There we go. So now what if I want it to narrow like from top to here? You can use move to or you can do this. I can have to change the location a little bit. I can unlock, reset this a little bit, and then we rotate. I'm gonna reposition what if I wanted to scale from there lock and then now here we go I can narrow it let's move it up there oops I shouldn't have to move there I could just use viewport to move here we go let me see through a little more here we go okay so Go back and I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And I think that's good enough. Doesn't have to be exactly. Here we go. And you need to look at on the font quick. I think the size of the head might be too wide. So let's squeeze this a little thinner. Here we go. And I think based on the, let me go back to right here, look at the horse. It's a little narrow on his mouth and wider on the, like the, the, the skull, the skull shape and the jaw. So in this case, oh, I'm gonna, hold on. I'm gonna have to bring that back. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to draw and I'm gonna narrow this section. Here we go. So that less work later. You might need to zoom in a little. This here. Okay. And I could make this a little wider. I think that's good. So and make sure you scale uh, zoom out until it's fit. So let's save this. This is how it look and save. I'm gonna call blocking. So are you gonna do that method again on another part of the body so yes. we can do it again okay perfect <laughs> yes. basically we're gonna use this method a lot throughout the body and um, I can introduce you how to use deformer soon with this body So now let's come back. Now, what about the neck? The neck is kind of curved like a sphere. So we're gonna use sphere. Um, not sphere, sorry, uh, cylinder. So you go to sub two and insert. 
slender slender there we go it's so big <laughs> so now you could there's a deform well just use that sub too here we go here we go and I think I'm gonna reinitial um, this will be vertical so I can do sl uh, a Q slender Y here we go and then scale it down stretch rotate and I'm gonna move in spot here we go okay so now I'm gonna show you how to taper this because it's quicker and let me turn this off a little bit so what we're gonna do um, let me see through so we're gonna build that part can you see like a slender so I'm gonna turn this off temporarily so that I can focus and I'm gonna solo here we go so it looked like this and now to taper this and we can actually bend a little bit too um, so under move you have this icon these are customized or you can call function icon and these are reset the center to unmask surface we'll talk about that later this is a uh, to match to exit which is the home screen right there we can shift them so now to do that when I click this button you have a bunch of options and these are you can insert primitive or replace the primitive from here too now there is a bent R bent curve bent curve gonna be uh, the option that we use a lot and we have deformer flat inflate and taper so now when I turn it on it look like this so basically when you move your cursor over because there's so many options in here indicate what it is taper on that direction or taper on this direction bottom and then these are exponent to kind of a create a little softer look or something like that and this you have a uh, the strength on y z or x so right now if i grab that can you see i can taper like this here we go so now let me show you something first let me go back to gizmo if i switch this here we go and then i go back look at the axis when i go back to the taper now can you see it doesn't look like what it was it's just because of the direction of the deformer is based on the gizmo you see so if I wanted to get it back I unlocked it and then I'm gonna rotate my gizmo so that it line up into the direction I want it here we go <laughs> my hand and then lock and then I'm gonna go back taper so now I'm going to taper this down. Here we go. And I can see through. Zoom out. See if it's similar size. Oh, I might need to turn off solo so that I'm going to have to use that head as a reference. So this is the size. I think it's a little too, too small. Oh, actually it's that here we go okay so now I can bend a little bit I have only one segment now you don't have to click this except is mean execute that but we don't have to execute it we can switch so let me turn this off again and solo one more time so now I can switch to bent curve bent arc it's fine too let's try bend arcs because it's less information here we go so now this is the twist radius 
and the angle to bend. So now it depends if this is going to be that direction and here it's going to be on the that direction. Now what we need is we need this direction right here. Can you see? I can bend and um, it doesn't have it doesn't indicate that X, Y, Z it just place it based on the angle of the face. Can you see? So you have to use that and once again guys you don't have i mean if in the future you feel like this is too much work try to figure it out you could use just move brush to move i just want to show it to you because there is a option that you can use now i can go back to gizmo okay and i can come back here and bring this back and then I'm gonna turn off solo mode so I can reposition here we go now mine is a little different um, I can edit more let me bring this back what about this if I use a regular move brush or move topology so sometime when you have a section in between it may not move it with it based on the brush size so now what if you want it to be like flat area all move together so there's another move tool you click on move brush it's called move infinite and you press move right here move infinite depth so when you turn it on is basically is just move anything that perpendicular to the selection. So right here, if I change the brush size a little smaller, I can form it. There we go. And can you see it move from this side all the way to that side because infinite depth. So now I can see through again. There we go. And I'm going to just use that to move. And um, you don't need to give the space like what the reference. I like you to do overlapping. So that less editing later. But I mean, even though when we have a gap, you can use a clay and clay build up to fill up that gap really quickly. Okay, so now let's look at on the font view. Because the neck need to be a little. Let me go back to zero so now I'm gonna use a regular move brush press X to active the symmetry so I'm gonna narrow this there we go so I mean how do I make that decision it's based on the reference see it's a little narrow right there and um I I have another reference that I look at before so it's kind of inside my head at the moment but if you do it for the first time just Google horse on uh, internet and then use those images as a reference okay so now it looked like this save the file shortcut is control shift T and then I'm gonna override that 0 1 because even though there's a more shape on it but there's nothing really okay. I don't need to create another version so now on the body look like this so once again the body is kind of round so we can start off with the uh, cylinder again um, you don't have to get a fresh cylinder you could use this object if you want to so for example you can just duplicate that select this let me reduce the visibility and I'm gonna just duplicate it. now there are two of them turn on move and then I'm gonna just grab that and reposition here we go but the problem with this is, is uh, 
if I look at on the front view, they might be too narrow on there. So let's look at on the top view instead so that I can re-modify it a little bit. Why that? And I have to narrow this section. I'm going to use a um, move infinite to quickly move, make this a little bulgier. Here we go. And Then just reposition. I use move infinite at the moment. Here we go. So does the move infinite brush just like grab it by an edge and pull it? Um, it's actually you can grab any part of it. It's same as the move brush, but the move brush is just move only only the radius of the brush it doesn't go across like across from left to right but the move infinite is does go across it's use all the depth so basically if i grab right here we'll also grab all the way to the other side that doesn't make sense yeah okay. okay that's it and um it just like uh it's it's exactly like move brush, but at the infinite depth. The regular move brush doesn't have infinite depth. That's all. And then I'm going to just move. Now, I could see that there's not enough segment right there. Right? Can you see? So, one and if I have another segment, that would be good. Now, we have another brush that can add segment. But I don't want to overwhelm you with the um, technical part yet. So in this case, what you could do is you can subdivide this. So right here and under geometry, divide. When you divide it one, can you see it looks like this? Because you add more division onto it. So it's going to be rounder. Now after you divide though, um, when we do dynamax, dynamax need the surface to be only one level. Cannot be division two, division one. See, two and one. We will use this more with the second project, but not this project. So what I need to do is I move to the highest one, and then under delete on delete lower, I can click delete. So now it's become one division. And at this point, I can move to form the geometry. There we go. And move that. Now the brush size is a little too big. I still use move infinite at the moment because I want it to go across the body. And S is brush size. Here we go. So something like this. Now let's turn this off. Look at on the front view. I think it's good. I can narrow the back on the top a little bit. So I'm going to use regular move. You can use move topology. Now move topology will move. The radius will follow the topology. That's all. Yeah. I'll be openly honest, I actually thought this was a dog the first time I saw it. <laughs> yeah. It is look like dog, yeah, I know, even though when I finish it. <laughs> but after you detailing it, is you can change. I mean, for example, if you done this, you finish it and then you can build this to lion, dog, horse, anything actually. You just add a little more stuff onto it. So now, save again, control shift T. Gonna save. Here we go. And um, I can add ear later. Do, do you got the concept, the idea of it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Chen Nuga didn't like salt the roads or anything. Uh, not, wait, why am I talking about Chen Nuga? Uh, Johnson City didn't salt the roads. 
Oh, wait. Like, really? Yeah, like, if you salt the uh, roads, then uh, uh, basically you don't, they don't need to cancel at school or anything like that. Oh. They, they were salting the roads last night, um, but it was while it was already snowing. Um, I think that they weren't expecting as much snow as what actually came. I, I mean, like, that's, I, I understand that sentiment. And, uh, like, here's the thing down in Chattanooga that's farther south, and they did something like that. The problem is when you have basically for several, maybe four or five days, all across the country. All right. So, so now let's get this. Here we go. Um, the late, the, the tail, you just use bent curve here. So, um, the rest of them, do you think, can you do on your own all of this or do I should continue <laughs> to show I mean, you? I think I can get the basic poly thing, but I'm honestly still working on the lion. The lion? Okay, so, got you. Yeah. So, um, that's taking priority right now since that's the most immediate grade. All right. Because this will be great too, but I, mean, I know. Great. I figured. I'll, I'll give you this until like next week. So, now, um, you just have to line up things like this. That's all. Here we go. So I can narrow the belly, belly a little bit. In between these, um, like class projects, I guess you could call them. Uh, yeah. For like practice things, do we need to be also working on our own animal projects, or is that something we're going to be starting later that you're kind of like do guided classes with and help us around? I'm actually or? planning to guide you on Thursday. That's why I want to look at. Uh, I want you to like get started how to how to moving things deform the surface like to block out the object um, because this technique is going to be the same technique that you will be using to block out your your project one in um, combination with the detail on the head the lion head that we did so and the, li the lion head is due tonight right um did i Hold on, I don't remember now. I thought there wasn't a due date on the lion head. Yeah, I thought we were just gonna turn it in as uh we got. Uh, I, I think so. Trained on it. Yeah, I, I was I was just assuming that because you said this next project is due like next week, so I was thinking like the lion head because you gave lion it head. last week, it would be due like around maybe, uh maybe thursday or something i don't know yeah lion is supposed to be done by now but i know some of you still try to get it done so i kind of let it a little loose this time <laughs> so i well, said we sorry um, hold on um, let me look at on the line here um i give you what is it i think you put it do friday friday yes i give you until friday Mid, uh, Friday 12.30. Actually, I, I meant it to do midnight, but there's no option for midnight. So huh. right here is the the latest. It's uh, 11, uh, 11.30 p.m. Yeah, 11.30. Because at midnight, that will be at, in the morning. In the morning, yeah. So I don't know why they should have a midnight. But... So, okay. And, you know, like these details, basically your project one yep. <laughs> detail. So, okay. Now I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so we're doing the lion head and the horse now. Yes, yes, and the when horse. When is the horse? The horse. You don't have to detail it. I, I um, last semester we did detailing, but I I gonna give you a little more time to work on the project one. So, so like this is done how it's. I'm just saying going forward. So the lion head would be due uh, by Friday Friday. night, and then this would be due uh, maybe next week uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, okay. because it's low poly. Right. Yeah, and you don't have to combine them. You could just do like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it would be kind of cool if we made like uh, some chimera like creatures, like uh, having a horse's body and a lion's head. <laughs> you can if you want to play it go for it <laughs> okay so now um 
right this section if you look this is the muscle that on the shoulder blade so we're gonna have to place that and then um uh, based on the 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 anatomy of the horse let me bring it here we go so like this section can you see it right there so the shoulder blade and has a little thick muscle all of this and that what happening with um with this come on here we go okay so now that section now this is a it's created just only a flat rectangle um we can do it better if we do flat rectangle uh, when you try to sculpt them to flat and smooth it take longer so um, I'm gonna insert another one I'm not going to duplicate this time so insert and I gotta do um, because it's brown I can just use sphere and on the sphere I'm gonna go to initial oh um, one more thing guys um when you insert sphere uh, insert any object it will convert it to polymesh if you use a pen it will not convert to polymesh so the option on initial will looks different so if in that case if you're done with a pen you need to make polymesh but when you make polymesh from the sub to zebra is somehow just try to prevent the uh, mistake or something I don't know so they it will convert to poly mesh and put into a fresh new tool you have to append it again so the best thing to do is using a insert not a pen so now I can do Q sphere here we go and press W scale it down and I'm gonna reduce that C through and I'm gonna go to font view, move this aside, squish it. Here we go. And I'm gonna move it up, relocate it, and I can rotate it so that I can squish that way. There you go. Yeah, this looks uh uh like I, I mean I, it is a lot easier this is just reminds me of just doing stuff in Maya <laughs> but um, it's easier than Maya because you don't have to care so much about its loop right so yeah. now I'm gonna bend so I'm gonna use bend arc and I'm gonna look at on the area I need to bend so most likely let me try that way so I'm gonna bend here we go so now like I said um, you just look visually and then now I can change the radius wider or smaller here we go. I think I'm gonna have to bend even more here we go wrap it around that's kind of cool so that's like it's shoulder blade or uh... right Exactly. So now yeah. I'm gonna switch to Gizmo, and I think I'm gonna have to scale it longer. Uh, you know, I, a funny joke. Hey, uh, Ashton. You know, I think you could eventually actually model like your profile pic, because if I remember correctly, that character is like a, technically a chipmunk. Which one? Uh, oh, Ashton. The yeah, Jeanette. She's a chipette. <laughs> Uh, from Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna switch to draw, and I have to adjust a little bit. I'm gonna use move topology or just move brush to reposition a little bit, to to reshape a little bit. Let me uh, bring this closer here. I should. Um, hey guys, I am look at on the uh, reference outside. So you don't see what I'm seeing it right now, but so that I can form that muscle close enough. Here we go. Let me just narrow. 
so now it look like that and I have to look at on the font view this has to be kind of wider like right here I'm gonna use move infinite this time move infinite depth there we go. so it has to be thicker because that will produce uh, that will connect to the leg so like when you do uh, when you work on your project you really need to take some time to form blocking so if you do bl block uh, if you blocking right you edit less so now to mirror to the other side you just duplicate this one using duplicate and then you're gonna flip it to flip it you need to use deform deformation and mirror and mirror X because can you see that the exit X here we go so now I got two of them okay. and the next thing I will work is that one Oh, I think I make, hold on. Oh, yeah. I thought I make it too big. It's, it's okay. Here we go. That section. So this section is kind of look like a squeeze slender. So I'm going to just start insert slender. Here we go. And it's already a uh, poly mask. So initial, I'm going to do Y axis. Here we go and scale it make it smaller there we go. let me turn that off I can't see move it aside and squish here we go there we go right there bring it back angle now I could use taper but it's too much work I'm gonna just move it and you can use regular move brush or move topology is fine Okay, so let's rotate this a little bit. Make it larger. Okay, something like that. Now turn it off. And let's move this right there. And I think, hey guys, I switched Q and W. Q is draw, W is move. So I'm going to narrow, not narrow, how about move that section wider, here we go. Hey guys, if you get confused with what you move it, you turn on transparency so that you can see through. And if I zoom in, can you see it right there? I think that's good enough. Okay. This section, I'm gonna have too much work to add the gap, uh, to to form the gap there. I could just make it a little longer. Maybe taper in. Okay, and um, now the leg. My size is a little off. Okay, a little too long, but that's okay. 
So now I'm going to insert insert slender again slender initial Okay, and this one I can taper, might be quicker. Taper, and just taper that. And I'm gonna move instead. Were you using cubes or cylinders for the legs? Oh, uh, cylinder. Okay. Because it has a roundness onto it. So yeah, you just tapered to get a little bump in the middle. Right. I mean, if okay. if you get confused about taper, you could just use move brush. You can also do like this, uh, inflate, and I can hold Alt key, and can you see it's kind of string it back. If you don't hold anything, it's kind of make it bulgy, like inflate it. So there's so many ways to do it, but um, deform is kind of a, it depends. <laughs> okay. Yeah, taper looks way more controlled and controlled. like better to use. Gotcha. Um, Andrew uh, is oh. asking, when is this video going to be uploaded, uh, you know, for reference? Um, probably after we done it's gonna okay. take about an hour or two to finish upload on YouTube so yeah it, it, it's kind of it's kind of nice how uh, well yeah we I mean we can uh, it, actually uh, one second yeah. hey guys what one more thing um do you remember when we use a duplicate, right? Now, there's another thing we can do um, if you want. Um, I don't know, should I tell you this right now? Or, um, well, I already bought it up. If you hold control key while you're on Gizmo, you can duplicate it. However, they are not, uh, this will not put this object on a different sub tool will be on the same tool and can you see when you hold control drag it's masking the original and duplicate the new one the new shape now if right now see in the same tool they're exactly the same tool so if I go back to draw and let me uh, solo here we go and if you unmask by control drag now they are a they are together overlap but they are not separate so different to now how do we deal with this though if you hold control shift see control shift is the selection the selection is allow you to do this if you click and drag it's turned green this is indicate that you want it to keep whatever it's inside that green color will be visibility here we go now to bring everything back you just control shift drag yep, sorry if you drag it will reverse the visibility if you control shift click it will bring everything back is there now, a uh, sorry, is there anything like in Maya for like control one just to focus on one piece? Um, no, this one you have to use solo. That's okay. exactly same uh, same function with a uh, control one, which is a isolate selection. So it's solo. But this, okay. the solo will work only a sub two. 
So if the object are in the sub two, any objects that are in the sub two will be visibility, but nothing else. Can you see? So if I turn it off, everything come back. If I turn yeah. it on again. Also, also I uh, like I have been using YouTube videos, but I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. is there like no zoom function on D2L at all? Like for past recordings? I, I have some on it. If, did, have you ever looked at it? I, I'm trying to look through like uh, D2L and uh, I, I, I don't actually see uh, the classes zoom on it. Really? So yeah. this is, is uh, our course that look like this. And then if you go to contents, or oh, you can look at on the uh, bookmark here, contents and weekly. Oh, and weekly then... lecture. I, I thought there was like an actual like Zoom thing for like upcoming uh, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Oh, the Zoom meeting. I still couldn't figure it out how to bring it back. So basically the Zoom meeting, um, you have to use the, um, the one right here. <laughs> I, I put this on the uh, under uh, on top of the syllabus too, so you can go there. I still couldn't find it. Like, I tried to uh, recover, reset everything, doesn't come back. I don't know. I must delete it from the uh, the home screen okay. by accident. But anyway, so so now right now we are on week three, and I, I will add more notes. Um, um, that we uh, the tool that we use so so that it give you a little roughly to 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 identify what we using like a mask and things like that okay so now what you need to do is uh, the mask um, if you hold control shift together and click on the object here we go oh come on the brush size is too big let me turn off the symmetry So control shift click. Hey. Hold on. I think uh, what I make a mistake on the uh, poly mesh, a uh, poly group. Let me reset a uh, group. Yeah. Auto group. Here we go. So I think I accidentally click this uh, control W by accident to make them become a uh, dynamash sub. So now, if I hold control click, can you see? I can hide or I can bring if there are different sub to uh, different geometry, different top, uh, different poly. So now what I need to do is uh, I need to separate this. To separate, you could just do split. Split two part, there we go. And now they are different sub tool now. So you can get started really quickly with a uh, control drag. Here we go. So I think that's it for lecture on this because it's going to be keep repeating again and again. Um, I'll do the tail quick um, because the tail you might get confused that um, the deformer again so let me insert the tail quick insert. um i have a kind of basic question but yes. it's a problem i keep running into mm -hmm. and it has to do with the sub tool panel sometimes when i start like a project like i'll put in a sphere or something yeah and i go in to insert another shape it'll like hide the original shape like it's making i don't i don't know how to explain it because i don't understand zbrush's interface all that good yet oh. but it like hides the first shape and doesn't like combine them on the same like project i guess oh oh no um in that case you use a pen that would cause the problem so let me let, let me make this um smaller quick so cylinder this i don't mean to interrupt you it's just something no, i'm having an issue with and i don't know how to solve it <laughs> so this is what happened like uh if I do a pen and then I append sphere, now the sphere is not, oh, okay. Sometimes it does this, sometimes it's convert, convert. If you see PM3, it's mean poly match, it has been convert from the original. So let me turn this off quick. 
let me switch okay let me clear the screen quick so what happened is like this so I'm gonna create a new one new sphere okay and then I'm gonna turn on why is chain hold on is okay so right now this is primitive sphere and not poly mesh so I can't brush when I do it look like this okay I can still uh, scale though but I can't now what you did is uh, so I'm gonna convert this so make poly mesh so now I'm gonna append sphere oh still do that sometimes it doesn't do that I mean if it doesn't do um, why is hold on let me no, it happens when I use insert. I haven't used append yet. It, I would just like go to insert, insert like a cylinder or something to my project to make like a snout, and then the head would disappear, like everything else I had been working on, and everything I don't know here, why. I mean, everything here has disappeared. Is that what you meant, right? Uh, no, it goes away in the subtool panel, and it like instead of inserting it into the subtool panel, it like just erases it. everything else and makes it yeah. like solo. Are you sure you're using insert? Yeah, I've only used insert. I haven't used it a pen. You told us to use insert. <laughs> because sometimes you might do this though. If if you click on the tool and I let me do sphere. See, it switch. I think that that make more sense if you do that. It switch. Can you see? So I have to go back to. It, it's still in here, so you can kind of cycling it to see which one is which. Yeah, that's what happens, but that's what happens when I use insert, but it's just sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time, so I know there's something I'm doing wrong, but I just I mean, don't know. If, if that happened, like for example, what you can do is you can make that poly mesh and go to your original, try to find it in, in here, and then you can try to append. You don't have to do insert this time. You can append and then make sure you read that name mp3 cylinder 3 so if i do a pen mp3 right there so i can append that in that does it make sense oh so like it separates them and i can go to append and combine yes. them back together you can okay perfect back. yes I cool think you, that helps yeah i think you missed that when uh, we we when i show in class and um when i try to convert then it's convert and create a new new tool like totally new tool so i have to re-append back to the original so this is the same thing you can re i mean when you choose a pen you want it to append only oops sorry right here look at on the one that has mp3d it's mean it has been converted already if you append the sphere it will be a initial sphere again and then you might have the same problem so and if you want to be safe just do insert only and just pick one of these right here this section will be the one that's already appear here if the second section these are primitive so okay. the second when are we uh, don't do roll S say it again when are we don't do roll Roll so, call. Oh, not yet. Hold on. We got more time. So let me go back to the, the tail. Let me finish that. So now the tail. Why I see this. Oh, I have sphere. Hold on. Okay. So let's take a look at the tail. Let me look. I gonna I think the tail when you look at the detail here is need a little more section so i could start with the prim uh, the initial so i do initial x i can increase the x a little bit like how about four oh not x z sorry so c i think i do incorrect one moment here we go i don't know why it doesn't update i should do just rotate it like this. Here we go. Okay. So now let me scale it. Move it. Mm. 
Okay. Scale. Oops. Scale uniformly, you grab the center. And non-uniform, you just grab like that. And yeah. Okay. So now, I'm going to bend this. I'm going to change the pivot point because of the bend curve or any uh, deformer based on the pivot point of the uh, gizmo. So I'm going to unlock. You can hold Alt key. Somehow my Alt key doesn't work today. So I'm going to move to that direction and then lock again. Click. And this time we're going to I'm going to use bent curve. Bent curve has a little more detail. So right now I am on Z. So this this is X. Oh, this is oh sorry, Y X and let me rotate. These are Z direction because I rotate. So my like I said visually you look at on the visual this dot is allow you to move however I need more resolution so these are symmetry and these are exits so you can change the axis to see how how the how it, the orientation of the uh, the resolution of the band here we go so got to be like this now you have these are smooth but this is the resolution so can you see I can increase now I increase about six, so I got each point there. You don't have to do exactly like me when, when you do it. So now to manipulate this, you grab that and rotate it, uh, move it. And I move it on the side view so that I can force to move as a, two pan, uh, as a single plane and move only a Z and uh, X and Y. Here we go. And now these are twist scale. You can taper it down a little bit. And you can click to activate and taper by changing the scale. And these are squeeze. Squeeze is just make it thinner and things like that. So here we go. Grab that. I'm gonna make that up oh, make a little smaller. Here we go. So now, when I'm done, I'm gonna just, I mean, you can click accept. Accept is to execute this. And it will reset the, uh, the, the deformer. So if you want to maintain that deformer like this shape, you don't do execute, you just get out and then done. Now I can reposition that if I need to scale. Here we go. So now, that's the tail. And I'm gonna reposition it. Rotate it. Okay, I do a little uh, too much than the reference, but you got an idea. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop this for a moment. So we didn't talk much about masking at all. Let's talk about masking later, uh, next section. So I'm going to stop the record now. And um, do you guys have any questions? Save. Okay. I'm going to override it.